when performing a hubcap inspection, verify that the hubcap identifier is correct. Inspect the gasket under the lid for any tears, rips, or other signs of deterioration. Next, replace the lid and verify that it seals to the riser completely. Inspect the riser for any deterioration that could lead to emissions. You're looking for any gaps and cracks. Verify that the valve leading to the riser is in the closed position. You can tell if the valve is open or closed by looking at the valve handle. If the valve is open, the handle will be lined up and parallel with the piping. The gasket under the hubcap lid should be free of debris, cracks, tears, corrosion, and deterioration. This is an example of a failed hubcap. Notice that the gasket has deteriorated significantly. This hubcap lid would not be able to create a proper seal with the hubcap riser and would allow emissions to escape from this control device. The riser must also be inspected for any cracking, gaps, or deterioration that could result in emissions escaping the control device. In this example, you can see that the riser looks like it's in passing condition. However, the riser is not actually attached to the drain, so this control device is considered non-functioning and should fail inspection. Another example of a failed inspection. You can see the riser has deteriorated to the point that openings to atmosphere exist and are not controlling emissions to the atmosphere. Be aware of the valve's open and closed position. The ball valve is open when its handle is parallel to the pipe and closed when the handle is perpendicular to the pipe. The handle position visually indicates whether the valve is open or closed. When inspecting P-traps, the first thing to do is verify the closure device is identified correctly. Open the lid and verify that a water seal exists. If a water seal is visible, make sure you don't see a sheen on the water. A sheen may indicate that the liquid seal may not be water. If a sheen exists, the inspection may be passed, but the additional water should be added to flush the control device. If a water seal is not visible, you might need to use a tool like a snake drain or a hose to verify a water seal exists. If you can't see a water seal, but have verified that one exists, add water to the P-trap. If the P-trap has a lid, replace the lid and verify that it seals to the riser. P-traps are required to have a verifiable water level at the base of the trap. You can see that this inspection would be considered passing. P-traps without a verifiable water seal should be considered as a failed inspection. Vent flappers are designed to remain closed during normal operation. This is an example of a passing inspection. A vent flapper that is open during normal operation is considered a failed inspection and must be reported to the customer immediately. To inspect a junction box, check the entire perimeter seal for signs of deterioration. You're also looking for any holes, cracks, or other signs of damage and potential leak points. Any gaps or tears in the seal are considered a failed inspection. Other things that would be considered as a failed inspection would be missing gaskets, latches, 
and bolts. Wet surfaces and staining around the seal is a good indicator that there's an issue as well. Gaps are typically resealed with silicone by Think Environmental unless our customer does not wish us to perform these types of repairs. Failed inspections that cannot be repaired by Think Environmental must be routed to the facility for repair. When inspecting cleanouts, inspect the entire circumference of the cleanout for gaps where emissions could escape. Look for missing bolts or visible damage to the cap or seal as signs of a failed cleanout inspection. It's important to remember that any failed inspection be communicated back to the customer no later than the end of each day that the inspections were performed.